Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today is September 17th, 1 p.m. Japan time. As usual today, I want to give a world news report. Every day I try and summarize all the important news that has happened in the uh, global markets over the last 24 hours in a 10-minute YouTube video. Uh, for those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy, traveling the world. Just started this YouTube channel when I came back to Tokyo. Uh, just started this English channel you're watching right now three months ago and started the Japanese channel in uh, January. I got a little bit more subscribers there. So would very much appreciate if you follow this English channel uh, going forward and press subscribe below. As usual today, I want to first uh, start with a quick glance at global markets. World news, all types of news, it's all reflected in the numbers in the markets. So first start objectively by looking at the numbers. Then from there, look at economic news, political news, society news. And at the very end, I'll give you my opinion on what I think is the most important news of the day, as well as answer some questions and comments uh, from the viewers in the YouTube comment section. So let's get started here. First and foremost, let's start with the markets. What happened today? Uh, looking at the U.S. markets and North American markets, uh, today the markets were open on September 16th. Now, today we see the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 0.13% today. The S&P 500 was down 0.46%. NASDAQ Composite Tech was down 1.25%. TSX Canada was down 0.83%. Looking at Europe, again, this is for the 16th. We see for Euro stocks 50, uh, largest 50 stocks in Europe, 0.2% uh, up today. FTSE 100 UK down 0.44%. DAX Germany up 0.29%. CAC France up 0.13%. IBEX Spain up 1.06%. Now looking into Asia, this is for the 17th. Uh, we see the Nikkei 225 is today down 0.72%. The Topix is down today 0.47%. Hansen Hong Kong is down 1.62%. CSI China down 1.12%. ASX Australia down 1.05%. And MSA Asia Emerging Markets up 0.64%. Now guys, looking at this, uh, the biggest thing that I take note is, again, this is a big reversal of the last two days. Uh, today, the Nasdaq is back down. Uh, however, the Dow is up. So again, we're seeing more and more reversal. Um, there's uh, less and less correlation between the Dow and Nasdaq recently, which is very interestingly. Uh, it's not been this case for mostly throughout this year. They've been moving together. Uh, the Nasdaq has been moving up more than the Dow. But now we're seeing sort of a reversal in the fact that the two are not moving together that much at all recently in the last two weeks. So please keep an eye on this to see if this uh, continues going forward. Now let's move on to economic news of the day. Economic news, lots of news today. The biggest news by far was the Federal Reserve Bank of the U.S., the uh, Central Bank of the U.S., Federal Reserve. They held their monetary policy meeting, and the Federal Reserve left the target range for its federal funds rate unchanged at 0 to 0.25% range in today's meeting, in line with market expectations, signaling it may hold them until 2023. <laughs> this to me is kind of crazy. So I read this news. Um, again, guys, for more details on the Federal Reserve and uh, their new monetary policy, please see my previous video. I'll put it at the end of this video, but they made a huge change in their monetary policy uh, at the Jackson Hole Symposium, in my opinion, now putting a more emphasis on their dual mandate on the one mandate part, more emphasis on the actual maximum employment part. And during this uh, speech, uh, Powell did say that he is going to be targeting more and more uh, towards a try and maximum employment rate. And he will be targeting. He thinks that maximum unemployment rate uh, will be around 2023 at around 4%. Uh, so the maximum unemployment rate, he believes, is around 4.1. And he thinks it's going to take about three years to get there. So therefore, the 2023 calculation. And also looking at the growth rate for inflation, they're expecting inflation rate to be 1.5 this year, 1.6 to 1.8 next year. And then the pace reaches 1.9 to 2% by 2023. So again, inflation will take until 2023 to get to the 2% range and to get to the maximum unemployment rate of 4% or below, 4.1% or below, it's going to take until 2023. So this is big news, low rates for a long time. Uh, it almost, I'll, I'll talk about this later on on what my comments are. Otherwise, today, big news about Bank of Japan also held its monetary policy meeting. Uh, here, very much little news, unfortunately. Like, I didn't see that much in terms of their change. Uh, obviously, there's a new administration in the government in Japan now. Yoshite Suga is now the new prime minister, uh, first time in eight years. And uh, he has elected a new cabinet and so on. So the focus is more on that. Uh, Bank of Japan has not really changed any of their uh, policy at the moment for these uh, coronavirus measures. In terms of other types of rates, uh, 
economic news here we saw in brazil as well the central bank of brazil unanimously decided to keep its benchmark interest rate at an all-time low of two percent on september 16 and this was also widely expected otherwise we see uh in new zealand gdp plunged by 12.4 percent year on year in the second quarter again this is second quarter so this is kind of old news in my opinion between march and uh june and last but not least guys uh, U.S. futures are again down quite a bit now so indicating that we're probably seeing again a bit of a volatility in the U.S. markets I'll comment on this later on now let's move on to society news of the day for society news i want to first start with coronavirus cases what's going on across the world daily new cases reported for coronavirus worldwide today for september 16th was 308,226. very close to an all-time high unfortunately the all-time high was around 311,000 on september 11th and this is a very close number indicating that clearly uh, the second wave is still continuing at the moment unfortunately daily new deaths also reported today for september 16th was 6,229 looking at by country we see daily new cases reported for india was around 98,000, usa around 40,000, brazil around 37,000, argentina and spain around 11,000, france around 10,000, colombia around 8,000, men peru israel russia mexico etc around 4,000 to 6,000. uh in japan we see the numbers around about 490 just to let you guys know uh, India again approaching 100,000. Look at this number now. It's over 5 million for total new cases recorded. I think it's going to surpass US in the next two months or so. Let's keep a keen eye on what goes on here. And other types of news today uh, we saw on CNBC, uh, you know, the main big news, I think, is regarding the Fed and what they said, their new policy, their new policy to hold rates for longer, uh, lower. And what the heck is going on? Why are markets reacting this way? I'll talk more about this later on. Uh, also, in the news, we see Trump says he's not prepared to sign off on anything for an Oracle TikTok deal unless it is a majority U.S. owned deal. Uh, finally, we see news about how the oil sector could face more distress during coronavirus crisis as it struggles to draw investments. Uh, more and more energy investment is going into solar, into new energy, into clean energy, and we're seeing more less and less investment going sort of into the uh, exploration production of EMP of sort of these uh, traditional energy sources at the moment. The Wall Street Journal top headline again talking about what I was saying earlier between the TikTok and Oracle deal the Trump administration is still pushing uh, to give American investors a majority share of the uh, TikTok company again TikTok is owned by ByteDance a Chinese company uh, again I think that this is a negotiation tactic I think he's going to continue to push for this but at the end of the day he'll probably still uh, in my opinion the Trump administration will probably still uh, allow a deal to happen even if it is not majority U.S. owned as long as it creates u.s jobs in other types of news today um we didn't see much going on you know i think Politico and the uh cnn was talking about how trump is contradicting his cdc director over masks uh talking you know also cnn was talking about this dr redfield testified uh to congress that masks may be more effective against covid 19 than a vaccine and the claim, president claimed he was confused uh again this is from the cdc director center for C center for disease control director uh again guys i think this is more political rhetoric attacking trump from the left side uh due to elections um in the economist we see news today about the new tiktok saga's biggest winners as the race to control tiktoks enters the final stretch white house friendly tech giants seem to have carried the, the day uh so lots of uh, big companies are vying to take control the social media is very powerful as you can see i'm obviously on youtube and uh, a lot of big companies seem to be vying for this and it seems that oracle is going to be taking uh sort of the, the, the winner's stake in this turn in other types of news today uh you know uh, joe biden talking about how the u.s trade deal for with the uk it sort of hinges on respect for the good friday agreement this is regarding the eu and uk post brexit trade talks uh for those of you who are not familiar with the good friday agreement good friday agreement this was actually signed uh in 1998 between uh northern ireland and the uk uh sort of a peace agreement uh resolving a lot of different tensions for over many many decades for the two countries and joe biden basically saying that right now the uk government trying to sort of uh amend part of the brexit deal last minute in relation to the northern Ireland customs arrangement uh he's saying that you know 
basically that this is not acceptable. And he's saying that, uh, you know, they must honor the Good Friday Agreement and this must honor uh, their agreement with Northern Ireland if they want the uh, trade agreements between the UK and US to continue. So he's sort of giving a warning to the UK government to uh, follow its promises at the moment. So guys, today, so much big news. In my opinion, uh, what is the biggest news? I'd say the biggest news is by far the Fed. Uh, now, what the Fed is doing here and holding rates until 2023, I'm going to do a separate video on this, but this to me is kind of a crazy procedure. I think it's a big mistake, actually. I think it's a very large mistake because now they've set the bar very high. There's not much more you can do. If there's another market crash coming, it's quite dangerous in my opinion. And in relation to this, the Fed put out such a uh, dovish meeting, but now U.S. futures are down 1%, and we also saw the U.S. markets were down quite a bit too. So markets are not enjoying this comment at all. I think this is the biggest news of the day. Central banks meetings to this week, so the BOJ announced, uh, U.S. FRB is announcing. Now I believe the uh, Bank of England is also going to announce this week, and Brazil just announced. A lot of central banks are announcing policy meetings this week and if the markets don't react favorably to me it is sort of signaling that uh central bank policy is sort of coming to a dead end at the moment so i'll talk about this in another video today because i think it has big impact on the u.s stock markets especially um last but not least guys in terms of questions and comments from the audience i got lots and lots of questions uh regarding my video yesterday on china i'm uh, very interesting to get the take uh you know so uh, china you know obviously on the u.s uh channel uh, sorry in the japanese channel got lots of criticism saying like why are you supporting china dan again guys i'm not supporting the chinese government I am basically looking rationally at the economy and the data and saying, I don't think all the data out of China is a lie. I, I, I find it hard to believe, you know, I looked at 20 different pieces of data. I can't, I don't think they're all lies. I think the Chinese economy is recovering. And I was recommending a long-term investment in ETFs, mainly related to Hong Kong. So this is not China. It's a different exchange they're trading. So they're usually similar companies but they're different exchanges so the money is going to a different place so do note that in my opinion this is a uh, not really related to supporting the chinese government at all uh, but very interestingly i uh, got a lot of criticism from the japanese channel on that uh, otherwise guys lots of questions about uh you know where to open a brokerage account on that guys you got I, I would highly recommend you figure this out on your own uh, i can't recommend specifically uh brokerage account what you should open uh you have to look at this on your own but there's lots of good ones out there interactive brokers saxo monix boom uh you know if you're living in the u.s obviously great ones like ameritrade uh scott trade e-trade all that stuff so i think you should all look into this on your own and decide on your own what is suitable for you thanks so much guys for watching my video please subscribe to my channel below looking forward to your comments looking forward also please let me know guys english subscribers please speak up on what else you want to hear the japanese subscribers are very very voracious with their comments english subscribers Hit me with what you got. I want to know what you want to hear. I am uh, I'm very much taking into account of what you want to hear, and I will definitely fit it into uh, the program. Thanks so much for guys watching my video channel. I appreciate it. Sampai jumpa. Adios amigos. Sayonara, everyone.